coming up the stage. He runs shows all over town, uh, and his name is Jacob Erdman. Put your hands together. Give it up for Jacob Erdman, everybody. All right, all right. Give it up for Fort Comedy. You guys are beautiful. They're beautiful. The most powerful duo in Fort Collins. They're beautiful. So uh, my phrenologist told me that I'm susceptible to gullibility, and then my astrologist confirmed it. <laughs> so that's pretty fun. That's a good idea. I'm actually writing a new book about my penis. It's titled, Long Story Short, because <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving for three and a half inches. <laughs> Just, <laughs> <laughs> so they were talking about weddings. It's wedding season, right? Weddings are fun. I, uh, I love weddings, but I hate marriage. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Uh, I've been invited to a lot of weddings this season. And um, you know what? It, it's, it's different at my age. I'm a 34-year-old man. I'm being invited to like, my friend's second and third marriages. <laughs> and like, weddings are pretty expensive for me, because I'm originally from Wisconsin. So I got to like buy the airplane ticket. I got to rent the hotel, I got to rent the escort, like shit adds up. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the hit 1980s four-door sedan, no, I'm talking about prostitutes, y'all. <laughs> Wisconsin prostitutes, they like two things, it's beer and cheese, shit's expensive out there. It's a whole lot of lady, let's put it that way. You know, the old axiom in Wisconsin is, if she ain't 280, she ain't a lady, and by golly, they're working their way up. <laughs> it's fun, it's fun. And I'm all for personal expression, like straight up, I love personal expression, but I think the dumbest thing you can do outside of getting married is getting a tattoo of a wedding ring on your finger. It's like when I see somebody with a tattoo of a wedding ring on their finger, it's like looking at a Carl's Jr. with a really big parking lot. It's like you've already set yourself up for failure, what did you think was going to happen? I mean, honestly. But don't get me wrong, I'm not a complete monster. Like, I love love, I love the idea of love. But I always think it's funny when I see somebody under the age of 25 who's engaged, they're already married. Because I know in 10 years, I'm definitely gonna have an opportunity to sleep with that girl. <laughs> like best case scenario, she's gonna be 35 years old and in a loveless marriage. And that's a best case scenario. It's bonkers. <laughs> it's fucking great, I love it. Now, I feel that if religion actually cared about marriage, they would encourage premarital sex, because to do so otherwise is just irresponsible. Now that being said, some Muslims believe that if you die and go to heaven, you get 72 virgins, 72 virgins. I say, fuck that. Give me five 35-year-olds who just got out of a loveless marriage any day, <laughs> right? You don't need permission to get on top. Like, let's party, this is how we do it. <laughs> and I feel that that 72 virgin thing is very one-sided. I can't imagine a Muslim female going up to heaven and being like, 72 male virgins? 72, what am I gonna do with 72 male virgins? I took my shirt off, I made 72 male virgins come and I still haven't had sex yet. Am I in the right heaven? Is this heaven? You know what, fuck off Allah, where's Jesus? Oh great, he's part of the 72. This is awesome. This is great. Now don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I was born and raised in a Christian household. So I would like to consider myself a casual observer of the Christian lifestyle. And it never really stuck with me, and I was wondering why. I did some research, and it turns out because of all the infighting within religion. Christians fighting Christians, Muslims fighting Muslims, and everyone hates the Jews. I don't get it. There are beautiful people with beautiful penises. Maybe they're just jealous. <laughs> but that's alright. And I was like, and I did some research, why is there so much infighting? And it's because of the religious text. The religious text is open for interpretation. I mean, give me a fucking break. I mean, that's like calling God and asking him directions to his house. But instead of answering you, he tells you a parable about a tortoise and a hare whose main point is just follow your heart. <laughs> just follow your heart. In fact, there's only two types of people out there who write directions that are open for interpretation a bad writer, or someone who doesn't want you to get there. <laughs> That's been my experience. And I got bad news for Christians, y'all. I got bad news for Christians. Jesus ain't coming back. Not because he doesn't exist, but because he's too intimidated by today's magicians. <laughs> Jesus is looking down from heaven right now and being like, Dad, damn it. <laughs> 2,000 years, 
ago, water in the wine and fish sandwiches really sold the crowd. And I'm looking down there right now, and there's this guy named David Blaine, who literally stuck a metal stake in his arm and pulled it out without even bleeding. If I could have done that miracle, I just would have jumped off the cross and continued teaching. All right, that's my time. You guys are beautiful. Have a good night. Jacob Herdman, everybody, leading off the show. Casually slipping in and everybody hates the Jews line into his head. That's fine. It's fine.